Wow, we are live. Um, thank you for everyone who's watching this live or if you're watching it on the recording. Um, huge welcome to the seventh person who has agreed to do a live conversation with me on LinkedIn. Um, Sarah Bryars, who's the CEO for Target PR. Um, we work together on some common clients. Um, I love working with you and the team in Cheltenham when we can go um, to the office. Um, and today, one of the topics, it actually came up earlier in the in the series, was nicely teed up for us by um, Professor Jonathan Deacon when he talked with me about the six things a marketer needs to know. Um, that topic is the importance of purpose. So thank you to, to Jonathan Deacon. I know he's going to be watching this because <laughs> he shares them all. Um, and welcome, Sarah. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me, first of all. And uh, I've really enjoyed watching the conversation we've been having with people over the last few weeks uh, and it's been great to I think just feel a bit connected with people hasn't it when when everything around us has just been so upside down I found it quite reassuring and comforting actually to just to listen to other professionals just talking about um, you know the, the issues and also the solutions and yes. uh, so yeah as a deacon piece was great because I loved that he was taking us back to some of the really core fundamentals. Uh, and it was just a really good reminder just to pause and, yes. uh, and go back to the basics. Because, you know, when we, when we ask ourselves those really straightforward questions, remind ourselves of those principles, um, yeah. it's easier to come up with the answers of how do we deal with things in this, you know, really crazy, situation that we've all been facing. So uh, so no, I, I found it really helpful and looking forward to, to chatting with you today. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, it, it's been really interesting week by week. There's been kind of common themes and, and new things that have come up. Um, but the reason for today is, um, for me, just perhaps another excuse to talk about Simon Sinek. And <laughs> um, I have met him. I've got a selfie. I'll maybe share that again later, an excuse. Um, but I regularly watch his Start With Why talk. I'm a big fan of the TED talk and the book um, and how it links to communications. And again, it was another excuse, as you've kind of said, about pausing to just, just have a watch of that, because the biggest thing throughout these past few weeks is it's about reflecting. It's about having that pause moment. And, and the start with why is, you know, why do we get out of bed every morning? Why do we do what we do? Um, and I actually read another interview of his this morning. He'd done a recent article in Inc. And he'd put, I've written this down, um, it's normal for crises to shake our confidence. A crisis can put us off course, but it doesn't mean that our why has changed. It just mm. means that we've probably stopped focusing on it. Um, and that was quite a succinct um, summary of, of when we were talking about this, of just that importance of having purpose for ourselves, mm. but for our businesses as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I think what I feel is that that, uh, you know, the extraordinary kind of intervention that that COVID became when it just hit us <laughs> out, out of nowhere, it felt like um, yeah. and uh, and changed for for pretty much every business. It, it yeah. had ripped through that changed everything almost overnight. And um and I think what's really interesting when you look at it is how uh, everything became paired back to some really fundamental uh, questions of, OK, so how can we be useful right now when we're yeah. facing this you know, health emergency? And, um, and you could watch and see how businesses were just switching like that to, um, to reapply themselves to the fundamental needs that were happening right there, right then. Uh, those fundamental needs of, you know, how to stay safe, how to, yeah. you know, how to feed people. Yes. Um, and, uh, and you know, so, so you saw, you know, manufacturers just shift to preparing, um, you know, PPE or to manufacturing ventilators. And, yeah. and we saw, you know, the support for frontline workers and, and you know, feeding them and taxing them and all those things. And so there became this kind of just really, how can we make ourselves useful? And for those yeah. of us that can't make stuff, <laughs> um, yeah, like like you know, 
those of us who are our consultants. Um, I think the way that we thought maybe we could be useful was just to, to share um, yeah. that knowledge freely um, yeah. and to support each other actually. Um, and so, so the things like your conversations with with people, and and you know, there's been so many great webinars and panel discussions yeah. um, where people are just sharing that knowledge and insight to help each other to, yeah. to face the challenges that, that we have. I and mean, I that's, think that's yeah, sorry. no, um, I think that is one of the the things about this situation is is you know, I don't think it was in everyone's plan for this to happen, um, anyone's plan, but it happened to everyone at the same mm. time. It wasn't a specific location in the country, it wasn't a specific industry, it wasn't a specific job function, mm. but this did happen to every business. And, and, mm. and yeah, we kind of knew it was happening, but it wasn't happening to us in the UK. Um, mm. And it did happen very quickly. We had to look after ourselves and our families and, and work and colleagues. And, you know, that was quite overwhelming. Mm. So I, I think in hindsight now we can look back on 100 days, the conversations that we've all had with each other, that we're sharing our homes with each other, uh, behind the scenes, that yeah. we genuinely mean it when we say, how are you um, and how can I help and how are you feeling this week, has actually probably helped us get through it, but also mm. helped us assess those things in our minds as well about mm. why did I do that and why am I doing that? and is this actually really helping anyone um, mm -hmm. to do what we do? So I think yeah. purpose no, I really, is probably that summary word, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is, and it, and it's really interesting, isn't it? How um, you know, purpose-led uh, marketing and and purpose-led brands. You know, that's not a new thing. That's no. that's been increasingly talked about uh, over the last few years. I mean, cause-related marketing goes back much further, but. The kind yeah. of focus on purpose uh, and and uh, how businesses can harness that in yeah. order to um, to not just uh, connect with their customers and to understand uh, how people make their choices these days. And you know, there's some great research out there, isn't there? I know Edelman yeah. does the, the annual trust index yeah global research i mean brilliant research but it's kind of shown this pattern hasn't it over the last few years of, of people making decisions based on how they trust uh, yeah. the brands that they're buying from so we can see that pattern that's been uh relating uh how we as businesses connect per our purpose with the mm. interest of our customers but yeah. it's not customers it's it's employees too so again you can see this this kind of movement, if you like, of people realizing that, you know, to engage our employees and our teams, yeah. that having that common focus that, that really helps us to go, do you know what, we have a place in the world and we really believe it and we know that this is how we can contribute, um, that that has so much value to bring yeah. to, um, to our own communities, but actually much wider too. I think it's quite interesting how, you know, so that pattern has been moving uh, over the last couple of years. And now I think it's almost like this um, extraordinary situation that we've been facing uh, has just, uh, as you say, everyone has had to maybe take that moment of pause and go, okay, so so what are we what are we doing and, and where are we going? Um, yeah. and, and that maybe it's like one of those bell curves, isn't it? That the yeah. people that have been on this journey uh, yeah. for years and that they've understood and focused their businesses around uh, contributing to social and environmental, you know, fundamental yeah. kind of impacts that they can have. Um, uh, and then there's those that, you know, actually it's a new consideration to really think about um, how we, uh, you know, uh, consider that focus of purpose and yeah. then communicate it. Yeah, and um, I think there's an interesting point about that, getting your employees on board with it, that I guess having that sense of purpose and knowing about it has been even more important when everyone's working from home and effectively in isolation. If they don't know what everyone's trying to focus on and work to, towards, it would be even more isolating to, to kind of go, mm. why am I doing this? And um, you know, the world's 
the world's gone crazy and, and why have I got to do this task how is it how is it helping and and tying it mm -hmm. together and um yeah we, we we talked about this study so the Edelman trust barometer we won't bore you with stats at lunchtime we could could list stats but we won't but I will put a link in the comments mm -hmm. um, and I will just take a minute because if you can see now um hi Lisa hi Jackie hi got two Annas um Chun thank you for for joining us and watching this yeah this is all about communities as well isn't it and supporting and and our purpose yeah. and our role within our community as well as with our employees and our clients um absolutely you, yeah you said about some some clients are already kind of on this journey mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. kind of now realizing that they need to be on this purpose focus mm -hmm. what advice are you giving to those clients that have had to take that that step back yeah. and gone why yeah. am i doing this what do we need to do well, I think, you know, the, the first thing to say is that although, you know, we talk about it a lot as marketing PR and comms professionals, that the starting point is that it's not a PR exercise. You know, yeah. it's a fundamental way of doing business. Yeah. And uh, and that means it comes back to a leadership issue. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, you know, I, I, as you know, I did my um, MBA a couple of years ago. Uh, which was, you know, an amazing experience in itself. And um, yeah. it was an MBA in leading business, which mm -hmm. was a really unusual approach to MBA uh, that was through Quolux and uh, the University of Gloucestershire. So yeah. it was all about embedding um, learning within your own business uh, mm -hmm. with all that rigor of, of academia as well. Um, but it kind of really helped me to understand and think about really deeply the role of leadership within every organization uh, and, and apply that within our own too and, and thinking yeah. about, about that role. Um, but it, it kind of, so now I feel like it's almost like everything that you touch, you can see <laughs> comes back to leadership. And, yeah. um, and certainly purpose does because mm. the only way that it can be um, you know, lived and delivered and uh, a true focus mm -hmm. is if it's, absolutely fundamentally within the structure and the belief of that organization so yeah. uh, so it has to be uh, start at that that leadership level and and as communicators you know and as consultants yeah. you know uh, whether you're in-house or external we can have a role in that because we can mm -hmm. we can ask the right questions and yeah. we can support and encourage and show different ways of doing things and and actually one of the things that we quite often do at target is to um is to work with our clients to to kind of take that pause and refresh and think about their vision, mission, values. Mm. Um, I've yeah. got a meet with a client next week to do just that, and um, and that's not about us, you know, imposing it on yeah. anyone. We've come up with a great set of vision <laughs> yeah. and values. It's about just helping to draw that out uh, from the leadership team uh, yeah. because. That's the fundamental starting point. And then once that is clear uh, and is understood and believed and enacted, then mm -hmm. as communicators, we've got great stories to tell, to show rather than just tell, to show how uh, you know, an individual organization is making a difference uh, mm -hmm. and to which audiences and to, to the stakeholders that are internal as well as external. So, so the things yeah. that, that we can do with clients is to, is to support them in that process mm -hmm. of uh, being clear within themselves about, uh, about what those, uh, that vision and values are, um, and then to help them articulate that. And it's really yeah. interesting because um, every business is, is at a different part of that journey. And, uh, and we have yeah. clients who are you know, forming and shaping and really thinking again about how they uh, position themselves uh, yeah. and, and how they unlock that momentum for their staff as well as for their, their customers. And there's others, as I say, who are experts at it, who have been practicing, uh, yes. you know, really a great, um, uh, having great social impact through the work they do, but maybe have not really felt comfortable about how to talk about it and so, and so sometimes there's amazing purpose that's happening within a business but actually it's not being fully connected with yeah. people 
uh, own uh, understanding or interests because people have been nervous about how to talk about it. So that again is where we can come in and say, well, actually, you know, let's just think about, uh, you know, again, coming back to basics of, yeah. you know, stake stakeholder understanding, um, mm. thinking about, yeah. you know, who your audience is, what matters to them and how we can engage uh, on, on the messaging that, that really works for them. I think yeah, there's loads of points in there. Um, and I agree with them all. And it's 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 fascinating when, you know, as a consultant, you get to facilitate and get involved in these conversations because sometimes internally people are so close to what they're doing, they don't see how amazing their stories mm -hmm. are, or they haven't taken that time to to appreciate what impact they've had on their customers or their clients or their employees as well mm -hmm. e either. So to kind of facilitate that conversation and work with them. But referring to your point earlier as well is that some people are doing this but don't know how to talk about it and it's absolutely yeah. not because it's a pr exercise it is because it is a genuine ethos for how mm. people work together and some great comments coming on here i don't know if you're watching them at the same time i was watching while you were you were talking <laughs> about um jonathan thank you for for watching he's talking about authenticity um mm. and you can't just write a vision mission and values that go on a wall you actually do have to pull everyone in and embrace this because Otherwise, it does just get seen as, as, as you know, a PR statement that goes out there and, and isn't genuine. And, and people will look behind it as absolutely one of the first things that they do. And, 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 there's, and there's, such a, there's such a danger in that, isn't there? Because, um, you know, we, uh, you know, it, it's, trust comes from deed, yes. you know. Yes. So, uh, so, yes, we can say the right things, but it's actually people's experience, their lived experience of, uh, of their interactions with that organization yeah. which is where people really form their, their their opinion of it and the trust that we have uh to believe what someone says about themselves so um so yeah it, it really is about uh just i think supporting an organization to to understand that and yeah. to and to find that strength and momentum within themselves and then for yeah. us to help to yeah to to, to share um, yeah. uh, to, um, to, to help them tell their stories and yeah. you know that's that's a really exciting piece of work to be involved in and, and yeah. something that we love doing and it and it doesn't happen overnight this trust factor does it you know it has you know it's not it's not one one article it's not one blog post it's not one tweet it's something that happens over time so this yeah. getting the purpose living and breathing in everything you do is so important and as Anna has put there you know it absolutely has to be genuine and come from the top top down as well yeah. so um, it does. it's also it's really interesting I think that that top down thing because yeah. um again there's uh, there absolutely has to be that uh commitment and drive at a at a at a senior leadership level mm -hmm. um but I'd also say that uh that part of that leadership is to listen and recognize uh, the energies and interests and motivations of the people around them. And so often, um, you know, when you stop and ask, um, hmm. the ambition and the energy and the motivations of people around us, you know, are incredible. And, yeah. and it's bringing that all together um, yeah. that, that then means that you've got, you know, hopefully a, uh, a leadership team that's really um, clear about where they're going and and yeah. what our role is how, how we're useful to the world um, yeah. which feels like a really basic question to ask of ourselves but um, an important you know, one a really important one, one. and I, and I yeah. think it's a, it's a it's a great um, it's a great subject to just take that little step back periodically and to yeah. check in with yourself that that, that you have that you're clear on what that picture is and yeah. And at the moment, you know, as, as businesses, you know, we're all, you know, regathering our, yes. you know, um, our resources and our energies and, you know, bringing our teams back and, mm -hmm. and kind of thinking, okay, so how do we move forward in a, in a new world where so yeah. much has changed? Um, <laughs> yeah. and, and, you know, I think the, the sessions, you know, that, uh, that you've already had with with people we've talked about. Okay, let's let's go back and just check the principles. Um, yeah. that, that it's a great opportunity to also just refocus our 
our yeah. minds uh, on on you know how we can feel how we can feel useful and yeah. and I think that's an enormously motivating thing um, for for most people. Absolutely right, and that twenty minutes that we tried to stick to has gone the quickest ever. Um, <laughs> there is a question in here. Um, Martin has asked, what are the practical steps a business can take to show their purpose and authenticity? But I'm going to mm. hold that, Martin, because um, we're actually going to be writing up this session as a blog, repurposing our content, doing what we do. But as part of a Future Now campaign that Sarah is working on um, as target with other organisations, do you want to just quickly finish for us, Sarah, on just saying yeah. what Future Now is and where people can find those tips and advice? Absolutely. So, so this is just a great example of, of, you know, we, along with, you know, other um, great sort of local businesses and advisors that we work a lot with, um, we're thinking, how can we be useful? How can yeah, we yeah. share knowledge that's going to be useful to people? Uh, so we decided just to really simply bring together lots of different viewpoints and insights into a stream of activity under the hashtag future now, uh, yeah. that a group of businesses, so ourselves, um, Hazelwoods, BPE, Crowlux, you're going to join us too, yeah. um, are, are sharing um, uh, fairly regular insight on our own platform. So if you go on to LinkedIn, to, to Twitter, to Facebook, um, you'll, and you search for hashtag future now, you should start to see in your stream um, uh, a recognizable stream of, uh, of branded future now content that's... Yes. Uh, from a range of um, points of view, just sharing useful knowledge, um, yeah. and uh, we hope you're finding it useful. Yeah, thank you. Um, so that's my task for the afternoon: is um, downloading this, transcribing it, turning it into a blog, and, and doing everything that I talk about when I do um, content training sessions. Sarah, thank you so much for doing this with me. Um, I'm going to be, thank you. Um, I'm going to be back next week. Next week, I'm speaking with. Senior Marketing Lecturer, Dr. Jenny Lloyd. Um, and we're going to be talking about the challenges and benefits of teaching and learning online, something that's happened a lot um, over the past few weeks. We've all had to adapt um, whichever side we're on with that. Previous recordings are on my YouTube channel. Um, thank you for those of you that are writing comments as we go. Um, Sarah and I will keep an eye and feedback on those um, after this session. So enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks.